Buenas tardes, jefe de Estado y de Gobiernos. Tenemos el gusto de darle la palabra a su excelencia Ban Ki-moon, secretario general de la Organización de Naciones Unidas. Excelentísimo señor Raúl Castro Ruz, presidente del Consejo de Estado y el Consejo de Ministros de la República de Cuba, distinguidos, distinguidos jefes y jefas de Estado y de gobierno, excelencias, distinguidos invitados, señoras y señores. Gracias por su invitación. Es un honor estar con ustedes. Agradezco espe especialmente al gobierno de Cuba la excelente organización de esta segunda cumbre de la CELAC y caribeños. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm confident that under the leadership of President Raul Castro Ruz, the CELAC summit will contribute to furthering the peace, development, and human rights in your region. <clears throat> I have just returned from the Geneva Conference on Syria. From here, I go back to Europe uh, for the Munich Security Conference. But I felt it vital to cross the ocean especially for this summit. I could not miss this opportunity to be with you for this historic gathering. It is especially meaningful to be here on the anniversary of the birth of the great Jose Marti. He was an inspiration not only for this country's independence, but for shaping the Latin American identity. You are here to carry out his aspirations into the 21st century. I'm here to pay tribute and learn from what you are building. Your region has undergone turbulent times. You have come through stronger. That progress is visible across the work of the United Nations. Over the last 20 years, extreme poverty in Latin America and the Caribbean has been cut in half. You are peacefully resolving differences through dialogue. Many of the world's human rights con conventions have been inspired by the Latin American experience. Of course, challenges remain in your region and far beyond. Insecurity, inequality, injustice. But, but I see a region determined to tackle these obstacles together and share your example with the world. This summit is proof of just that. I pledge the support of the United Nations in all aspects of our shared agenda. Let me start with a social justice challenge. We see much unease, fear, and frustration around the world. Economies are growing, but incomes and decent jobs are not. Instead of people, instead of hope, people, especially young women and men, see obstacles to opportunity. No region is immune. I commend you for working so to close the severe inequality gap and urge even stronger efforts. We face two major opportunities this year. Accelerating progress to meet the Millennium Development Goals by next year's deadline, and crafting a common post-2015 development agenda to eradicate extreme poverty and advance sustainable development. <clears throat> Excellencies, I thank you for your leadership in shaping this debate. Let me congratulate this year's chair of the G77 in China the government of Bolivia, as well as the active role of all your governments. You have a record of ambitious
proven policies on social protection, health, education. As a middle income region, I applaud your growing efforts to share th those lessons with the world. South-South cooperation is fundamental to meeting our common global development agenda. We also stand ready to continue supporting your efforts for greater inclusive development through the work of the entire United Nations family, including the United Nations Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, ECLAC. Social justice also means climate justice. And again, your leadership and example are essential. You are on the front lines of the climate change challenge. You are a bio, biodiversity superpower. The region, particularly Central America and the Caribbean, is among the most vulnerable to climate disasters. I salute the extraordinary efforts of our host country, uh, Cuba, and others to advance disaster preparedness, resilience, and response. The climate challenge will take much more regional and global cooperation. On September 23rd, I will host a climate summit to engage world leaders and advance climate action. It will be a solutions summit. I invite each of you to come and bring bold pledges. Of course, when it comes to a climate action this year, all roads lead to Lima, Peru. In December, the government of Peru will host the 20th Climate Change Conference. This will be a vital stepping stone to a global agreement in 2015, which states, state parties have promised and which the world so urgently needs. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I also thank CELAC for your growing engagement on peace and security challenges. Conflicts in the region have passed, and the last one will hopefully soon be ended. I welcome progress on Colombia's peace talks that have been supported by the government of Cuba. I thank you for your generous contributions to United Nations peacekeeping around the globe, including your dedication to Haiti and to the mission there Minusta. I salute the efforts of so many of your countries in helping the people and government of Haiti address its challenges, including cholera. Important progress is being made to defeat this preventable disease. Now is the time to intensify work and support. The region led the way in establishing a nuclear weapon free zone where the Tlatelolco Treaty and inspired others to follow. While your region has made landmark progress in overcoming conflict, the day-to-day -day safety of civilians in the streets remain a major challenge. There is no magic formula or one-size solution to tackle crime and violence. Iron fist policies backfire. The most effective approaches put the protection of people's rights at the center. I welcome your discussions to create the regional forum to exchange experiences on citizen security. Our work must also stretch across regions, for example, sub-Saharan Africa, where illicit drug trafficking is a fueling and funding violent extremist movements. I welcome your important discussions on confronting the drug problem. You bring a unique point of view and set of experiences to the debate. Others may have different perspectives. My aim is to work with you and others to find common ground with creativity and respect for global conventions. I count on your engagement in the upcoming 2016 special session of the General Assembly on the world drug problem. Let us work together for its success. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, 
The interlinked goals of peace and development are underpinned by human rights and the rule of law. For decades, Latin American and Caribbean nations have been instrumental in defending and promoting democracy and human rights, which has been crucial for regional stability. Your region is one of a great diversity. This diversity is a strength that should be respected and nurtured. I encourage CELAC leaders to continue reinforcing the regional human rights system that is recognized as an example for the world. I also welcome your strong emph emphasis on the rights of migrants and persons of disabilities, as well as the fight against the discrimination against Afro-descendants and indigenous peoples in your region. The United Nations will host the World Conference on Indigenous Peoples this September. And let us continue our efforts to unite to end violence against women and girls. Here today, I underscore my call for the fullest compliance with all international treaties and obligations to safeguard human rights and deepen fundamental freedoms. Excellencies, distinguished heads of state and government, ladies and gentlemen, the crisis and flashpoints of the world often take me to other regions. Precisely because of your progress, we do not often meet in this context. But it is for the same reason that I look to you for even greater engagement and support across the full range of the work of the United Nations around the world. The architects of the United Nations understood that regional organizations were crucial to achieving our shared goals. In our increasingly interconnected world, this is even more important. When CELAC is stronger, the United Nations is stronger. I welcome your drive and determination. Jose Marti wrote, I quote, day and night, I always dream with open eyes, end of quote. Let us move forward with our eyes open to the realities of our globe, our hearts full of knowledge that by working and dreaming together, we can build a world of peace, development, and human rights forum. Thank you, muchas gracias.